to uh, just give a great, great warm welcome to a great man of God. We're thankful to have him with us today. And he uh, had church last night way down in Kentucky, drove up last night to be in service with us here today. I want you to help me, TB and family, make welcome right here to the Richmond, Indiana studio, Pastor Scott Kilburn. Help me make him welcome. Scott. We're always thankful for the opportunity to get, be able to be with you and minister for you and you come up and be with us. You preached for a revival uh, last month for us. Had a fantastic time together and you sang and ministered and I just want to get the, peop the people to know who you are and I want you to testify about the good things the Lord is doing. First of all, I want you to talk about where you were raised at and how you were raised and then I want, to, I want you to share a special testimony before we talk about what God's doing right now because he's doing some great things right now. So Amen. talk to me about where you came from. I was raised in Breathitt County, Kentucky. God in a little in a little Christian home and uh, went to a little Christian church uh, called the Pentecostal Workers Church, raising a little holiness background, and uh, and God was just moving greatly. And in three weeks revival one uh, one month, God saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost in the same week, and got to seeing God doing great things and and the power of God raised in a home that that my grandma and him taught faith. Praise God. Strong. Taught the word of God that you live by faith, walk by faith, talk by faith. And seen the power of God move in great and mighty ways. Praise God. Well, I, I want you, to, I want you to, to tell me about your grandma. I want you to talk about that church that your grandma, it was that your grandma pastored and she's my still grandpa, there. Yeah, my grandpa pastored and my grandma was co-pastor. She, uh, for 12 months, she, uh, I say when they moved from Indianapolis, Indiana to Kentucky, uh, in the holler there, Breathitt County up in the little holler, Head of nowhere. And, now, uh, <laughs> now explain what a holler is to some of these folks in Ohio. They don't mean to shout hallelujah. <laughs> it's in back ahead of nowhere between two mountains. Okay. And, uh, and back in, in the holler, where we call it in Kentucky, uh, she, was, uh, she had got stricken with cancer. Went from 12 months suffering with cancer. Went from 150 pounds down to 90 pounds. Lost all of her weight. Was losing her eyesight. But through her home, she would write on the, on the walls, by his stripes, I'm healed. Praise God. She'd write every verse that talked about healing. She'd write it on the stove, on the, on the washer and dryer. She got so weak that she couldn't go any farther. She told my grandpa, said, I'm going to go in the mountains. I'm going to pray. Well, they lived behind the church at that time. And so uh, what they, she's, my grandpa said, no. said, we'll lock you up in church. Well, let nobody bother you. So he packed her down. She finally agreed to it, packed her down, set her on the altar. Laid her on the altar there. She laid she, down. She, Brother Scott, at this time, she's about 90 pounds. Yes, 90 pounds. Lose her eyesight. It's coming. It's going. And uh, just on the verge of just dying. And, uh, and so she was old. Them old timers that didn't go to the doctor, didn't take medicine, that, that type of old time uh, holiness people. <laughs> and so here she was. She's sitting on the altar. There, my, kissed my grandpa goodbye. And my grandpa thought that's the last time. You ever going to see my grandma again? She was full of cancer. Full of cancer. And I want to emphasize that because they handed me some prayer requests a few mm. moments ago. And there's people on Hallelujah. these requests with cancer and leukemia and all kind of things that are going on mm. in people's lives that need healing. You're going to minister to them yes, right Jesus. now. Put her on the altar. And so, and so what it was is she, she was sitting on the altar, laying there. And here she was as she was laying on the altar. The devil came and spoke to her out loud and said, said, Ruth... You're going to die here on this altar. You should have went ahead. You should have went ahead and took, went to the hospital. Give up on faith in God. But Ruth sat there and said in just a few moments, said she don't know how long she was sitting there. My grandpa done went home, got in the bed, went to sleep. And uh, he, as he went to sleep, here she was praying, God, I'm standing on your word. I'm trusting in you. I'm believing in your word. Praise God. That your word says, by your stripes, I'm healed. Uh -huh. And standing on that promise that the word of God spoke, and while sitting there on that altar, my grandpa was awakened out of sleep. He got dressed. He ran down the side of the church and said, I told her I wouldn't let nobody bother her. I told her I promised her I wouldn't let nobody come in. The church folks have heard that she had gathered in that place and they heard that she was going to 
have service and pray and believe God for a healing. Well, just a few minutes, my grandpa got dressed, ran down the side of the church, looked through a window. He heard singing and music playing. Realized that the singing and music wasn't coming from inside, Come on now. Pastor Todd. And he looked over, over top of the church. There was angels gathered over top of that church. And he realized the singing Praise and the music God. was coming from the angels. He opened the door. There was my 90 pound. I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. <laughs> and it felt the, and it ran in there. And my grandma was running across the front of that church saying, guess what happened to me? Said, just a few minutes ago, I was sitting on this altar. And I said, God, I thank you for these years that the, by your stripes I'm healed. I'm standing on that promise. Hallelujah. <laughs> and said just a few minutes, said it felt like warm water went from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I feel healing going to somebody right now yeah. that's watching this right now. You believe in God. Doctors may have given you a bad report, but don't, don't believe that Say report because the report of the Lord says, by your stripes, We're you are healed. healed. Praise God. And my grandpa there, she says, said, guess what? Said it felt like warm water went from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. Thank God. <laughs> I feel something stirring right now. Now listen, that was, that was how long ago, Brother Scott? Because that's, this is important. That's been 30 years ago. And where is she now? She's still in Breathitt County, Kentucky. Praise God. Preaching faith in God, preaching the word of God, preaching by his stripes. We are I'm healed. Healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and, and Brother Scott, there are many people that are watching that have just wrote God off and said there's no way I can be healed because cancer is bigger than God. Leukemia is bigger than God. A daughter in trouble or a son in the hospital is bigger than God. But all of those things, you know what? God said the very hair on your head is numbered. It doesn't mean that he has a number. It means that a specific number for each strand. He said a sparrow doesn't fall, but that I don't see it. And so we need to understand how big that God is. We limit Him. We minimize His capacity and ability because we look at what looks so life-threatening and we look at what looks so dead like they did with Lazarus and said, Lord, you're too late. But what did He do? He said, Lazarus, come forth. Just like He did for your grandma. Just like, and, and so many